over 2.5 goals. One of the most popular markets to trade on Betfair and one of the most popular strategies. I'm going to show you today how to create a strategy using the over 2.5 goals markets. And we're going to have basically really show you some tips of how to do that, give you some ideas of how you can do that yourself, and what you might want to look at to develop a strategy that actually works. I'm also going to go into some of the testing and detail what I do to see whether a strategy works or not. So let's get into it, right? Now for this, I'm going to use the BetfairTradingCommunity.com software for football. If you don't already have it, go over to BetfairTradingCommunity.com. Go check it out. It is the best out there. This is what will help you create your strategy for using it in future, and it gives you your selections. It's such a time saver, and it's also really good for giving you picks that you want to use. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over to the right-hand side. I'm going to go create new filter. Now, one thing that I always suggest when you're creating a strategy, be it on any market, don't go too complex straight off the bat. Start with something very simple and build from there. The philosophy I'm going to use for this is a very common one amongst successful Betfair traders, and that is we're going to look for odds that are bigger than they should be. Basically, odds that mean that they're higher than the strike rate we're expecting to happen. OK, now I'll get into that in a bit more in a bit. So don't worry if you don't quite understand that. It doesn't matter at this stage. We're just going to start by creating our filter. Now, the first thing I want you to think of is what is the minimum odds you would like to back on over 2.5 goals or if you're laying lay and then decide to use that as your first parameter. So what we're going to go for here is we're going to go. So you select stat subject and we're going to go bet fair and we're going to select stat type. We want odds and now we basically choose the mark we want the odds for so we're going to look for over 2.5 goals because that's what we want to back with this strategy select operator just means which odds do you want greater than or equal to we're going to choose because we want bigger than this or these odds the odds i'm going to use 1.70 that's kind of the cutoff i personally like to use for over 2.5 goals I like odds that are closer to evens in this market. I think the more you get towards 1.5, the more difficult it is to get value because you need a much higher strike rate to win. So 1.7 is a great one to add um, and just click add. And that is your first, basically your first line for your strategy. But you're going to want something to compare it against. So I'm going to head over to Ace Odds, Odds Converter. And I use this a lot at the moment for looking at the decimal odds and comparing it to percentage. The reason is, if we know what percentage strike rate we need to win, we know what should be a value price. Again, I'll get into that in a bit more, so don't worry too much you don't get that right now. So I'm going to scroll down, and we know that our minimum odds are 1.7, which is exactly in the middle of these two figures. Okay, 1.73, 1.67. So what we're going for is in the middle. Well, if we look at the percentage chance, if you're backing at 1.73, you need to win 58% to break even. If you're backing at 1.6, you need to 6.7, you need to win 60%. Okay, so we know that if we're bang in the middle, this is about a 2% difference. So we add 1% to the 58. Basically, as a 59% chance that we need to win 59% or more of these trades to win at these odds. Okay, cool. 1.7. So basically what that means is that we need to be striking higher than 59% on this strategy to make it a value play, okay? Now don't, again, don't worry if you don't quite understand that, that's okay. I just want you to think in terms of what, how many do you need to win to profit at these odds? Now we know if we're backing at 1.7, if we win 60% of the time, we'll break about even. OK, so that's quite a good market to set out and start with. OK, you know, straight off the bat, you need to win 59 percent. And that comes into the second part of the filter. So if you are enjoying this video, we have a free gift for you. Absolutely free. All you need to do in the comments is say the word super trader and we will send that over to you. And that will help you with your Betfair trading training. OK, guys, back to the video. So we're going to go and I'm going to show you that now. So select that subject and we're going to go for overall. I'm going to go for percentage and then we're going to want over 2.5 goals. So full time over 2.5, okay, which is there. 
and then we're going to select greater than or equal to. Now we know that 59% is kind of our break even point with commission, maybe 60%, maybe a bit higher. So the easiest thing to set this to would be 65%, okay? Because if you get to 65%, you should in theory be getting value based on the fact that these teams are striking at that rate. Now, it doesn't quite equate to that because just because this has happened in the past doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen that way in the next match. But it can be a really good indicator and a really good, basically, parameter to use for this. So I'm going to click Add here. And then as you can see, we've got our, our first kind of filter that's comparing something. So we've got, we want odds 1.70 plus, and then we want over 2.5 to be 65% or more of the time. Okay, so that's cool. What else would I add here? There's one more thing that I add to all my filters, and this is personal choice. You don't have to do this. I use overall, and then select stat type total, then select that, and this one's easy because it's right at the bottom, matches played, and we select that. And then I'm going to go greater than or equal to eight. And what that means is that the teams would have played eight matches um, for these results to come into play. The reason I use that is that I don't want to be judging whether something has a high chance of over 2.5 goals and then see, oh, the teams have only played one goal, that's one goal, one game that season because that means the data isn't very valid. It's not particularly useful. I find eight works really well. I used to use 10 quite a lot. Eight or 10 is fine. You don't have to use this. Again, this is very much a personal preference thing, something that I've tested out in a lot of my strategies that works for me. You might find that you like it better with six. You might find that you don't need it at all. You don't want it at all. I mean, one of our best traders on the forum, he just trades straight at the start of the season. He doesn't care how many matches have been played. Um, but for me, this is what works well. Last 10 matches, I use that a lot for my scope. You could use last 20 if you wanted. The important box you want to tick here for me is restrict to current season. I want the data from this season. And again, this is something that I've cross-referenced a lot by looking at strategies I've tested over the years and found that looking at data from previous seasons often isn't particularly relevant to the data for the new season. Teams change, managers change, players change. Philosophies change, owners change. A lot can change in the off season in a football club. So you can't really expect that their results are going to tailor what happened last season. It's a fresh slate. It's a clean slate for every team. Okay, so now if you're going to trade these selections rather than just bet them and let them run, you're going to want to click restrict to going in play matches. Um, and then I'm going to exclude playoffs because I don't want those. And then I'm just going to call this over 2.5 goals, 65%. And then I'm going to save it. Okay, so I name the strategy, then I save it. And there we go. So one thing actually, worth, I've, I've actually gone back and changed it here. So I'm going to go for 60% plus. And I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but basically to do that, all you have to do is click Edit Filter and then select the stat you want, which is this one. And then I just change it to 60. Don't click Add because that will just add it to your already 65% one. You want to click Update and then it changes the middle boxes. So as you can see, the model, middle box is now 60. Okay, put 60% there. Over 2.5 goals, 60%. And then save. You can save new if you want to have a second filter, which is cool. I'm just going to save it here because I only want one for this because it's an example. Okay, cool. So now we've got a selection, okay? And what's interesting here is that the odds we can see in criteria one are 1.89, okay? That's solid, right? And then the criteria two is 61%. So that means that 61% of the games have had over 2.5 goals between these two teams playing home for home, away for away. That's really important. So if we look at odds of 1.89 and we go over to our odds converter, we can see that we, for those kinds of odds, we only need to win around 53% of the time. It's between this 52 and 54, okay? Yet, we know that they have 61%. So we think the odds should be closer to, say, It'll be a bit higher than 1.62, maybe 1.64, maybe 1.65. But let's say we think the odds should be 1.65 here. 
Well, clearly, if we're getting 1.89, which is what the odds are at the moment on Betfair, that seems to be a value price, okay? So the next step here is I'm going to export this strategy, okay? And I'm going to then open it up in a CSV file. And this is important because we've got our selection for the day. Now we need to test it. So one thing I'll tell you straight off the bat, just because your strategy says that this is value, doesn't mean that it is. Doesn't mean that this strategy will work. Like I say, historical stats don't always reflect what's gonna happen. The way we find out if they do is to go and test it a little bit, okay? So on this strategy here, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna remove the gaps between criteria one and criteria two, and then I'm gonna take out the rest of the data. Okay, and I'm going to copy this over to my testing sheet. Um, now, we do have ex an example testing sheet on the Betfair Trading Community Forum. So if you're a member of the site, you can grab that, go and download that, do what you want with it. If you need it, just let me know in the comments in the video, and I will share that link with you. Okay, so we're going to select this match, which has come up here. Um, actually, I'll put it there. Let's put it there. Okay. Just going to delete that row because that's irrelevant. And now you can see I've copied over the data into this strategy. Okay. And this is the same strategy that I've already tested a few games on. A bit like, um, you know, Blue Peter is <laughs> some I did earlier. Now, the whole point of this video is not for me to show you a strategy and go, this will make you money, or you should copy exactly this strategy, etc. What I want to show you here is just how you can start to test it, how you can start to look at it. As you can see, I've been doing it since the weekend. I've got about 25 selections, so nowhere near enough data to come to any kinds of conclusions. At the moment, it's 20 pounds in profit. And again, this could tank easily. You only take three or four losses and, and you're at a loss. So nowhere near enough data to make any good conclusions here. But interestingly, you can see I've got today's fixture. Now, if it wins, if it has more than 2.5 goals, I'll just input one win, one in the total, okay? And then I'll put the profit in, which 8.9 times 0 0.98. That's how you take off the 2% commission. If you're on a higher percent commission, just times it by, if you're on 5%, it's 0 0.95. You just take it off the 100, obviously. Um, so let's do that now, actually. So let's do 8.9 times 0. 0.98 and it's 8.72 okay so we can put that in there 8.72 and you, you'll see that it's updated in the PL here and what I do here is I keep a running one going as well um, the reason for that and I'll show you this in a second is that you can get a graph from it which is really handy for seeing variance um, so let's say I've got the result, I'll make it the same size, and then I'll put that one in. And you can see that the strike rate if that wins is 60%, 11% ROI, etc. Um, but we don't know that result. So I'm actually just going to remove the results, and we'll fill that in, obviously, after the game. Um, but again, the results are relevant, okay? What I'm showing you here is an example of how to use this for a strategy. So this is really cool. We get quite a lot of information here, ROI, strike rate, selections, average odds. I don't know why it says 69. I need to edit that column. Average stake is £10. And so far, we've staked £240. Okay, so that's really good. Right, we know that we've got something we can test and we can look at here. Now, here's the good thing about this. Like I said, if you've got this running total, you can actually do a, um, a chart. So let's insert a chart. You can kind of see how it works there, but let's do it as a line chart. So here you are. So you started out, bit of variance of the loss, up, really good run, then up, bit down, up, up, okay? That, in general, if you're looking at that as a chart, that would actually snake up as actually, you know, quite a good chart, um, but obviously way too early. Nowhere near enough data to make any conclusions from that, okay? So I'll get rid of that for now, but if you ever want to do that, it's such a cool way, you can, when you, especially when you've got like thousands of results or whatever, you can run that chart and you can see, okay, how would the variance have gone? You know, what should I be prepared for if I'm going to start? betting on this strategy, um, which can be a really good way of figuring things out. 
Now I'm going to go fix the average odds because I've changed this sheet a little bit. And the reason I'm going to do that is I want to show you why um, actually 60% is an okay strike rate on this strategy. Okay, so I've just selected the correct column for that. And now the average odds have come in at 1.9 now. Now, what's fascinating about this is that if you remember, we were looking at odds of 1.7 plus, and we also wanted a, you know, it to strike at more than 60%. Now, you might think, well, okay, let's go back to the odds converter. Odds of 1.7 and 60% actually aren't particularly great value. You know, if you're getting odds of 1.7 and you've got a 6% win rate, well, we know that the win rate needs to be 59% plus. So you're breaking about even. You, you make a slight profit, but then commission would get you. So you'd probably break about even, maybe a slight loss because of commission. But this is the beauty of setting these parameters. Remember, these are minimum odds. Most of the time, the odds are going to be above 1.7. In fact, there's only been two selections that were 1.7, and both of the times, the chances were well above 60%. In that case, 65, and in this case, 67. Okay, so remember that. If you've got a parameter that breaks even at its minimum, at its absolute base level, well, your average odds are going to be loads higher. Your average chance of winning is going to be loads higher. Look, some of these are ridiculously high. 75, 81%. Um, funnily enough, though, neither of those won, which is interesting. And again, I'll get into that a little bit just to close off this video. But this is the point. So if you're getting average odds of 1.99 and you're striking at 58% strike rate, well, you're going to make money. And there's the proof of that. Okay. But again, this needs a lot more testing. There's, there's nothing to say that this will particularly make money. And this strategy is very basic at the moment. It's at a very base level, right? We've just got three things in the criteria. We're just looking at odds over 2.5% in the last 10 games each, and then matches played to make sure we have a minimum of that. OK, so that's a very base filter. But what I like here is you're going to get a lot of data. And after you've got a few hundred results, maybe even a thousand, I mean, it's not going to take you that long. Let's say you test this for two to three months. You're going to easily have a thousand plus results because we've got 25 results in half a week. Right. So, you know, you could you could you might even get to say like near three thousand. I don't know. You'd have to see how that went. It would depend on time of year, stuff like that. But what's interesting is that you would then have a lot of data to look at and you could go, OK, well, I'm going to filter it by odds. I'm going to order this by odds and then I'm going to decide, well, how am I going to trade that? So if I filter this by odds, it will freeze this column because it's in the freeze section. But you can see it's now all the other matches have been filtered by odds. So I can look at them and go, OK, well, I can see that this around here loses. I can see that this high end loses a bit you can start to get a little bit of a feel for that. You can remove certain selections and then see, well, how much better would I have done if I'd removed that odds range? Same with percentage chance. You can do the exact same thing here. And I can look at it and go, okay, I can see that 60, 61, 65 has done really well. Hang on, look, 70 plus, I've lost five out of six. Again, that could be a pattern. Don't don't be put off by patterns either. Don't worry that because you might go, yeah, but Martin, surely the results should show that an 81% chance has more of a chance of winning. Well, if your strategy is telling you that clearly it doesn't work at those at that percentage, maybe combined with the odds, that could be something you remove and go, what well, just doesn't work at that odds range, or it doesn't work at that um, percentage strike rate range. Okay. And there's various reasons for that. There might, it might be that the market knows that they have a lot of over 2.5, but they're still making odds quite large. Well, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe there's some players that, you know, there can be other factors here. But what's really interesting when you analyze the data is to look at what pattern works, what pattern makes money, and try and follow that pattern. The one that interests me most would be odds here. And percentage chance is interesting as well. I will test that. But odds is a really good one. Often you will find odds ranges that work. Just looking at this at a glance, I can see that when you go above 2.0, um, we've had three select, well, we've had four selections so far, and only one of them's won. So that's interesting, right? If that carries on and you're only striking 25% above 2.0, we're not going to make any money because you need to be winning around 50% at those odds to make money. So again, a little trend already. 
but nowhere near enough data to make that a real trend. But let's say we get a thousand results and we look at it and we go, wow, anything over 2.0 is losing a lot of money. Okay. What if we actually stuck to just all own the odds up to 2.0? How much profit would we make? Let's go and test that as a strategy. Okay. And here's the last thing I'll say on that. When you do edit, filter your strategy, whatever, change the odds parameters, keep your original strategy. Remember I showed you, you can start a new strategy by just clicking save new. So let's say I wanted to change the odds. So I'll go back to the strategy. Okay. So let's just save it. Right. Now click edit filter on your strategy. And let's say I want to go, well, I know that actually it works better between 1.7 and 2.0. Well, you can put that in here, click update, right? And then you give it a new name. So over 2.5 goals. And this is what's so cool about this software. Um, and we call it 1.7 to 2.0. So we know what it is. This is the really important bit. Click save new. Do not click save because it will save over your original filter. Click save new and you have both those filters. And I'll show you that here. So you can see we've got over 2.5 goals, 1.7 to 2.0, then over 2.5 goals, 60%. What's cool about that is that we can then go, okay, we're still going to record the data from our original one. We're still going to record this data and see how the two compare moving forward. You know, when you've done a tweak, see if the tweak actually works in practice. Just because it worked in the past doesn't mean it will necessarily work in practice. A lot of the time I find that it does if it's, it's, if it's minor tweaks like things with the odds and things. But you might find it doesn't work. And then you go, actually, I was better off with the original sheet. And hell, if the original sheet's making a profit like this one, great. Okay, if you're a thousand results in and it's in good profit, you know, you don't need to look at anything major. You could make this... But look at those. The, the two things I really like to look out, odds and leagues. All right, guys. So this is this is the base of how to create an over 2.5 goal strategy. I know it's been a long one. This has been one of the most in-depth videos. I want to do this for all the markets, really, um, that are good to trade in football, especially for goals, because I know that you guys want to know how to do these strategies, how to create them yourself, what to be thinking about what kind of theories to look at when you start doing it. And hopefully this has helped with that. If it has helped you, can you say the words over 2.5? That lets me know that you've enjoyed the video, you've enjoyed the tutorial, and that you've got through 25 minutes of it and got to this point. Well done. Clap clap for you guys. You're doing the right thing in your Betfair trading training. Um, but yeah, remember to like, comment and subscribe. I've been really, really pleased with how many comments we've been getting recently, how much interaction I've been able to have with you guys. It makes a difference. It also means we can keep the YouTube stuff free. Obviously, you know, if, if, we don't get the likes and the comments and subscribes and it just won't be worth us to do it and we'll just have to keep it member only. But I want to train all you guys no matter who you are. All right, everyone. Hope you have a great week. But most importantly of all, I hope you make some money trading on Betfair.